The following video includes voiceovers, additional dialogues, and sound effects that don't come with the game. They are meant to provide my own perspective and enhance the story's immersion. When that happens, my reaction icon will appear on the bottom left corner of the screen. Hello, this is Steve from Able Movers. How can I help you? Hi, Steve. This is Peter. I need help with moving some boxes tonight. Sure. We can definitely help you with that. Can you give me a bit more information about the job? Yeah. I have a few boxes that I need to move from my apartment to my new house. I'll be out tonight, so the door will be unlocked. Okay. I can come over tonight and take care of it. Can you give me your address? Sure. My address is 619 Main Street. Great. I'll take care of everything. Is there anything else you need from us? No, that's all. Thank you so much, Steve. You are welcome, Peter. Have a good night. You too. Thanks again. Steve, just one last thing. Please make sure all my stuff stays sealed. I really mean it. Sure, Peter. We won't touch anything. Just move your boxes and we are done. You can count on us. All right. There are not many boxes to move. I should be done in no time. Come on, let's do it. that weird sound. Quite a minimalist, that Peter guy. Maybe he is the type who moves often from place to place. You know, that kind of person who is not keen to put roots in the same boring, uneventful, tiny town. I can't blame him, though. But I have to admit, I didn't feel comfortable when I talked to him over the phone. There was something off about him. Perhaps his deep, obscure voice. I don't know. Whatever, as long as he pays, I'm fine with it. Moving boxes. Certainly not one of the most exciting jobs I have done in my life so far. But the economy sucks out there, and I need the money to make ends meet. Take it or leave it. Well, I don't really mind taking it after all. That's life, they say. Wait a moment. There is something opposite the road. A person. Watching me? That's weird. Who is that? I don't feel good about this. I should get the work done as soon as possible and go home. That weird guy is still there. Standing tall in the dark, I can barely see him. 
Maybe it's just a drunk yard. I'm thinking too much. Relax, Steve. It's so strange that the TV turned on by itself out of the blue. I remember that old movie I watched before. What was the name? Ah, Poltergeist. Cool movie with those weird entities trying to communicate through the TV. I love horror movie, but this is the reality, Steve. Pull yourself together. I know I shouldn't open it, but maybe just a little peek inside could help. There's a journal inside and some glasses. I was sure I had covered my tracks, but her sisters were getting suspicious. One of them came to speak to me in person, sensing that something was not right. She kept prying and asking too many questions, so I had to take action. I couldn't risk her snooping around, so I had to think fast. I tried to convince her that my wife was away on a trip and wouldn't be back any time soon. But she wasn't buying it. She started getting too close, asking too many questions. In a moment of frustration, I grabbed a heavy object and struck her over the head. Her glasses flew off her head. She crumpled to the floor, groaning in pain. She lay there, gasping for air, grasping at her throat. I could feel her struggling beneath me as I squeezed the life out of her. It was a small victory. Holy God. God, what's all this about? Who is this Peter after all? Did he kill her? Did I just hear footsteps? Is he coming for me right now? You know what? I should finish everything, get out of here and pretend I saw nothing. Maybe he is just writing a thriller novel... Maybe that note I saw is part of the story. I'm sure there must be a logical explanation for this. I should leave now before I lose my mind. I've got enough of this place. Is this real? Fuck, it smells horrible. It was only a matter of time before someone realized that my wife and her sister were missing. My wife's other sister, the one I had spared, had grown suspicious and went to the police. I knew I had to act fast. I packed my bags and left town, but I knew that it wasn't enough. The detectives would come looking for me, asking questions that I couldn't answer. So I came up with a plan. I knew that I couldn't just disappear and hope for the best. I had to make it seem like I, too, was a victim, that I had vanished alongside my wife and her sister. It was a risky move, but I was confident that it would work. I began by staging a break-in at our home. I smashed a window and ransacked the place, making it look like someone had broken in and taken us all. I left a few items of clothing behind, along with some other personal touches, to make it seem more convincing. Then I disappeared. However, to ensure that no one gets too close to me, I started learning how to spike drinks with drugs. 
Although I do not condone this behavior, it makes me feel powerful. Okay, enough. I'm out of here now. What the hell is this? It wasn't like this before. Shit, the lights are out. I hope my phone's battery didn't die. Come on, come on, come on. There, I can at least see where I'm heading now. Holy Christ, did I just see a shadow looming from the kitchen? There's a gross smell coming from inside. I don't dare to open it. Damn TV, again. I'm starting to believe this house is haunted. Or perhaps I'm insane. Oh yeah, I guess I'm ready for the asylum, baby. The telephone doesn't stop ringing. The sickening sound is all over my head like a hammer constantly hitting my brain. I'm afraid to answer. Hello? What do you want from me? Your job was to just move the damn boxes, not open them. Listen, I can explain. Please let's talk. I didn't see anything. Oh God, please don't! How can we help you? Hello, I need some boxes to be moved as soon as possible. Sure, sir, we can send someone right away. Perfect! Please send someone who minds his own business. You know that saying, curiosity killed the cat? Haha. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. We are always the best. You can count on us.